My name is Jesse Town, and I'm the owner and creator of Prestigious Percussion. I build these instruments, and I'm here to show you how to assemble and disassemble so that they do not get damaged and ensure a long-lasting life. Right. What separates these from a normal drum is that all my hardware is attached to the center ring. When the heads are tensioned up, the, ba the balance of stress is quite even, but if you were to just completely remove one head and not loosen off the bottom head, you put a lot of stress on this center ring. So, In order to prevent that, as you're taking your head off, you start by loosening one side, flip it over, loosen the other side, and then flip it back over and remove the top head completely. So I'm going to demonstrate this by using a rotisserie or a lazy susan and makes assembling and disassembling your drums far easier. Loosen these essentially like you would a bicycle rim. Or lug nuts on a vehicle. These are the, um, the strings that are your attention for your snare. Like this, to engage and disengage your snares. And this side is just your fine adjustment to go in and out. So now I'll proceed with loosening the bottom head. It's good to always hold on to one of the lugs or keep a reference so that you know where you started because with 12 lugs you can lose track quite easily. So I've taken the tension off the bottom head. Now I can completely remove the top head without damaging the center ring or stressing it too much. Using these fine machine screws slows down the process having 32 threads per inch as opposed to the standard 24 on most common lugs, but it increases the thread lock which makes it so that your drums don't back off. Only high-end drums like DW drums boast a 32 thread per inch lug or tensioning rod. These hoops are custom made, hand built plywoods made from Ipe, otherwise known as ironwood, using machine screws, which allows me to have a much smaller recess than a standard drum lug such as this. I have to countersink so large that you lose a lot of the structural integrity of your hoop when doing so. so. I try to stray away from it if possible. All right, and now for removal of the bottom head is very much the same as the top head. What remains is a raw shell with all the hardware mounted externally onto the hoop. As you can see, there's no holes in my shells whatsoever because it robs away from this the drum's ability to resonate. This design allows the shell to transfer energy from the top head to the bottom head as efficiently as possible using a vertical grain shell and having nothing obstructing it. So I'll show you the removal of the lugs. This is one of my tensioning rods for And now the disassembly of the snare mechanisms. These are rather simplistic. They're stripped down to very basic shapes. These are... that's all of it. There's no moving parts. The only thing that makes it work is a small spring. And then the on-off cam is held together by a cotton pin. And so, 
mix my assemblies such as that. This just shows once it's stripped down there's not much to it. It's a very basic, very simplistic design. It allows for maximum energy efficiency and works very, very well. It gives it huge dynamic range. You can play so quiet and so loud at the same time. We have our on-off cam, our fine tension adjustment, our lugs, the pins to hold it. We have our custom-made hoops, heads, standard heads. I use ported heads because there's no venting in the shell. I have refrained from putting any holes in there whatsoever. I use personally pure sound blaster snares because they're designed for sh shells with no snare beds and just a really good caliber rope for snare string. And so we'll start to show the reassembly process. So first we'll start by reinstalling the lugs. So all you do is just slip it into the hole, you start threading it in and just do it by hand. Just give it some wiggling as you go through. It allows it to settle itself into place. And just to ensure that you don't cross thread because all of the hardware is made of solid aluminum and only the machine screws are made of stainless. So. And just snugged up. Doesn't have to be ridiculously tight. So. Now the reinstallation of the cam. And slide it through and slide your cutter pin in. Once it's installed you can bend the tabs over and shows that it engages. You get a spring to help keep tension and once it's engaged it stays. It's pretty sturdy against vibrations and it disengages and recesses completely within the circle of the drum. And the fine adjustment goes in the same. Let's give it a little bit of pressure. Just like that. Now, the reinstallation of the heads. This is where the tricky part comes in. You place your head. The thing to watch for on the resonant head is there's grooves put into the hoop to allow for the snare strings to go through, so they must align with your snare mechanism. The next step is to finger tighten and start each one of your machine screws. Because this drum is built a lot more accurately than most drums and doesn't have a quarter inch of play, you must ensure that all of your hardware has been started, especially threading into the aluminum hardware because it is soft and can easily cross thread. So you must ensure that you have fully started at least a few rotations by hand to ensure that the threads are fully seated. So you can begin to back your screws down, but you don't want to start tightening them just yet. Bring them down to almost flush with the top of the hoop. So now, let's start the top head to ensure that everything will be seated decently. What I normally do, because this one has been freshly assembled, the lugs are already lubed, but generally, if you had it for a while and you disassemble it, it is good practice to take your lugs and just put a little bit of petroleum jelly on there, available at any grocery store. I just dip it in there. It just helps lube and prevents galvanic corrosion and your lugs from seizing into your hardware if they stay seated in there for a long period of time. Now I repeat the process on the top head. Get all my lugs started. It's a little bit tougher to do the second side because there isn't as much wiggle room in the hardware anymore because it's fastened on one side already. So, 
if it takes a little bit of flexing on the your lug to make sure that it's seated in there squarely. That's all right. But you want to be able to do it without any serious effort because you could easily cross thread the aluminum. So once again, snug these lugs down to just before it starts to get tight. Before we move on to the next step. The next step before we start bringing the head tensions up is to ensure that the hoops are balanced all the way around and you're pulling evenly on the head. So the way I do that is either using a ruler with fine granulations like this one that has 34 and 64 of an inch or to the thousands on this side or you can use a set of calipers just standard calipers doesn't necessarily have to be digital ones it's more used to measure and get an even distance all the way around so that your head is being pulled absolutely evenly down that is, that is the key element to getting a well balanced head and it will help in tuning in the long run what you do is you go along and you measure your height and you find the lowest spot so and adjust it usually to the, the tightest distance and then I use that as a reference to snug each lug down to so that our head is sitting perfectly even because you don't want to have waves in your hoop not only does it stress the wood hoops I've seen metal hoops that have been distorted so crazy that it's a lot of stress on your drum as well so now that we've insta measured and got our lowest distance now we can start usually pick a reference like your top head and start going around and setting the distance bring it down so it just just touches and we know that the center ring is exactly even in the center of the shell so it gives you a good reference point to measure off of so now we have the bottom head is snugged up now we repeat the process on the top head pick a reference point and go around find the batter heads sit a little lower than the resonant heads so, you just go and measure first, see, find your low spot, set my head, and start at my reference point again, and bring down the tangents.